As mentioned earlier, information disclosure vulnerabilities or bugs is a broad term for any bug that leaks information. In some cases, such as the example that I'm going to show you right now, they could leak the admin password allowing you to log in as the website administrator. As we go through this example, we're going to learn more about status codes and most importantly, I'm going to introduce you to the hacker or bug hunter mindset. So I'm going to show you how you should think like a hacker or a bug hunter. And we're going to be doing everything from a Windows computer this time just to show you how to use Ferox Buster from a Windows computer. And I'll actually show you how to run Linux commands from a Windows computer because the way that I showed you in the previous lecture works on Mac OS and on Linux. So the only operating system that you don't know how to use Ferox Buster on is Windows. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this lecture. So as usual, you want to go ahead and open up the lab. So we'll right click and open it in a new tab. And as you can see, it's a normal website similar to the websites that we've seen before. And before we can use Ferox Buster with this website, we're going to have to install it. And to do so, I'm going to open up my command prompt. So I'm going to click on the start menu and we're going to type CMD to open up our command prompt in Windows. And in here, you want to type WSL dash dash install. WSL is short for Windows Subsystem for Linux. So basically once installed, it allows you to run Linux commands on Windows. So all the commands that we've seen previously, even though I ran them from a Mac computer, they run on Linux, like I said. So what we want to do right now is be able to run Linux commands on Windows. This is very useful because a lot of hacking and bug hunting tools only work on Linux. And we're saying we want to install because we want to install WSL because not all Windows distributions are shipped with it. If you hit enter and you get the result that I got right now, which is basically teaching you how to use it, it means that it is already installed for you. But if it's not installed, the command that we just executed will install it for you. Once installed, you can run the Linux command prompt on Windows, so the Windows subsystem for Linux, by typing WSL followed by dash U root. So we're saying we want to access the Linux command prompt using the user root. In Linux, the root user is the user that has the highest privileges on the system, so it's basically the administrator. We're going to hit enter. And you want to give it a bit of time to load all of that. And once you see this, you can see that the user is root at the name of my computer. And I am in this working directory. Now, before installing Ferox Buster, I'm going to install one tool that allows us to unzip archives. It's very, very important. And we're going to do that by typing apt install unzip. So apt is a package manager that is widely used in Debian based Linux distributions. We're saying we want to install a program called unzip. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to install it for me. And perfect. Once done, we're going to go back to Furox Buster and we're going to scroll down to the installation section. And we're going to copy the same Linux command, the Linux and Mac OS command, because even though we're on Windows, we're running this on a Linux terminal. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it in here. We're going to hit enter and give it its time to download and install. And as you can see, once done, once it's installed, we'll be able to use it exactly the same way that we did previously. So I'm just going to clear the screen and we're going to do dot forward slash followed by Ferox Buster. Next, you want to specify the target URL with the dash U as we've seen before. And I'm going to copy that from here and paste it with the right click. And finally, you want to do dash W followed by the word list. And I already downloaded my word list. So it's in my downloads directory and it's called common.txt. I showed you how to do that previously. So right now we're in C users user. So we simply need to go to the downloads directory and it's called common.txt. So the command is identical to what we ran before because we're basically running this from a Linux terminal. We're going to hit enter and just give it a bit of time to discover all of the hidden directories in the target website. And perfect. Now that the scan is done, let's have a quick look on the status codes that we have in here.
So as mentioned previously, the 200 status codes mean that the request that was sent in here returned a valid result. So the web server responded with a valid response, meaning that whatever we requested does exist on the target website. And the best example in here is basically just the home directory of the target website giving us a 200 response. You can also see three 400 responses and the 400 responses are usually sent because of a bad request. So it means that the web server cannot or does not want to respond to the request that we sent. And you can see that the requests that are being sent here is for admin, for admin and admin. And it's probably because these pages require authentication. You can also see here at the bottom, we have two 300 status codes and the 300 status codes mean that the request got redirected to another destination. So if you look at the request, you can see the logout request got redirected to the home directory and the my account request got redirected to the login. Now this is very important in the future when you actually start looking at the responses that you got and you'll be able to start noticing certain flags or certain behaviors that will point you in a direction of discovering a vulnerability or carrying out more tests. Anyway, looking at the responses that we got, we can see that we managed to discover a number of login pages. So in the future, if you manage to find passwords, you should try to log into all of these pages and see which one of them is valid. And you can also see that we discovered a strange directory called .git. So let's go ahead and just load it and see what we get inside it. So we're gonna copy it by simply highlighting it on the terminal and hitting the return button on your keyboard. We're gonna go on the web browser, open a new tab and paste it. And as you can see, you'll get a number of files and directories in here, and you can spend some time going through them to find whatever information that is there. And it's gonna seem that it is a bit interesting, especially if you click on the config in here, you'll see that you have an email and the username. So there is some useful information. So this finding as is, is actually an information disclosure vulnerability and you can submit it and you should be awarded a bounty for it or if you're doing a pen test, you should certainly include it in your report. So, so far you're doing really good, you discovered a valid bug. But you might be able to discover even more sensitive information from this directory. This is where the hacker mentality or the bug hunter mentality comes into play and we will talk more about that in the next lecture.